So I have my Firebox Freestyle with me today and I'm going to use it to cook my lunch. And I'll be using it in either the Bushcraft 6 or the Firepix 6 configuration. If you're interested in seeing how that works, keep watching. So when I made the preview video uh, prior to the start of the Kickstarter, I had mentioned that what I would likely do is probably only take the components that I would be using to assemble whatever configuration stove I was going to use on any given day in the woods. So that's what I've done today. I did need to take the whole kit bag out to hold all the components, but I don't have the full two stoves and all the grills and grates that goes with it. So I'll show you what I do have and we'll put it together. So inside I have one of the two stoves, but this has all six sides it's all already attached. I'll show you that in a second. I will be needing either the octagon grate or the rectangle grate for the Bushcraft 6. I haven't decided which one I'm going to use yet. I'm pretty sure it's probably going to be the fire pit, the octagon one, but we'll see as we go along. Now I did bring out the two longer fire sticks because I will need that to span the top to hold my pan up. I did also bring the grate out, the cooking grate. I probably won't need this because of what I'm going to be cooking today, but if I do, it doesn't take up really any extra space. Let me put that away. I won't be needing that for the short term. So clear a little spot away here on the ice and snow. Now the nice thing about having the box, not only does it keep everything contained, of course this is your ash pan for the uh, setup stove and it keeps it off of the wet earth as well. So what I, as I said, what I did was at home I assembled the stove into a six-sided configuration uh, just to save a little bit of time and not to have to carry the extra uh, parts. So there are four of the fire sticks. I'll be using a couple of those probably. And now with this set up in the six-sided configuration, I can use it either like this, which would be the Bushcraft 6, or I can expand it or just move it around a little bit and create the Fire Pit 6. I'm going to set it up in the Fire Pit 6 configuration because I think that's likely what I'm going to do. So in order to do that, take the uh, fire sticks and cross over the panels on two sides and then come back and do them on the opposite sides. Probably at this point I don't even need to. There are probably, in fact I don't need to. That'll be enough to support the octagon as I drop it in. As you can see, I'll turn the legs out. It's pretty stable as is, but it's nice to have just a little bit more stability that the legs turned out provide. And you'll notice that two of the legs actually sit outside of the ash pan, and that's just because the shape. Had I used the Bushcraft 6, uh, the thing, the whole stove would have been contained within the ash pan. So I can put this one aside. All right, stove is basically set up. All I need to do now is build my fire in it and get my lunch ready. So to get the fire started, I'm going to use some birch bark because I have so much of it available. Why wouldn't I? And I have some small amount of mostly spruce twigs right here. And then I've got some small maple twigs working my way up to some larger lumber that I have or fuel that I have set off to the side. A um, couple thoughts just even before I get this lit. Because of the wide open nature of the fire grate in the bottom of the freestyle, if you want to do any real cooking, anything more than just boiling water, then you need to use large pieces of wood so that it will slow the burn down, ideally hardwood. Well, actually, that's what I want is hardwood. I don't want to be using softwood because it can be so smoky and burn so fast. But I will get the fire going with some softwood and then I'll be switching over to larger chunks of hardwood because I am going to be frying on top of this and I don't want too much heat as you'll see. All right, let me get this lit and we'll talk more as we go. See this, hopefully this is fine enough to light. Come on, birch bark, there we go. It's crazy how some birch bark will take right off and some birch bark Needs a little encouragement or a little patience anyway. You can see how dry sometimes it is. It's going to be very smoky as I first start, of course, because uh, birch bark 
burns hot, fast, and smoky, as does the spruce twigs that I'm going to be dropping in right now. So I expect to have a lot of smoke and a lot of flame for a couple of minutes until that uh, starts to die back, and then I start adding some larger pieces of fuel on top of that. So as this catches on, why did I choose to use the fire pit over the Bushcraft 6? Well, it is based on what I'm going to be doing for my lunch today. As you'll see, I'm going to be cooking something up in a pan, and I felt the pan, the size of the pan, which is about 10 inches, would be a better match to the uh, fire pit than it would be to the long rectangular nature of the Bushcraft 6, because uh, the Bushcraft 6, I think, would be better now. Not that I have a lot of experience with it yet, but my thinking is that the Bushcraft 6 will uh, be better if I want to do two things at the same time. So I can probably get a small pan and a pot on the Bushcraft 6 to have space on that longer, more narrow uh, configuration. But if I want to get most of the heat or most of my pan exposed to the heat, I think this is going to be the better, better choice. So that first amount of small sticks are well engaged and I can start adding the small maple pieces that I've broken up here and then I can start adding the larger fuel. And things are starting to catch. So one thing I've noticed in the two uses I've had with the Bushcraft or the free, Firebox Freestyle out in the woods, the two fires, is that it is fast, very, very fast. And that's of course by the because of the open fire grate on the bottom, it goes through fuel, it lights up quickly, gets to a nice hot fire quickly, but then it goes through that fuel very quickly as well. Again, another reason for having larger fuel on hand. Uh, I'm not going to say that it's, a, it's not a good stove for use with small sticks. Uh, the comment I'll have at it this time is, if you're going to be using this just for a quick boil up for a cup of tea, coffee, whatever, then this will be great in the, even in the small configuration, the four-sided. If you're looking to grill some meat over it, get the large fuel. That's, that's the guideline. Of course, that's true of any, any fire and any stove, but even more so, I think, of this stove. Well, you can see we're settling down to a more stable, extended, self-supporting fire. That's it won't split. Oh, there we go. So I think we're about ready. I can start throwing on some larger pieces of wood. And my first couple of large pieces are spruce. And they will take a few minutes to drop down inside of the stove. And then I can start adding some hardwoods on, maple. Okay, uh, so here it is. It started. What I'll do is I'll bring it back when I'm ready to put my lunch on. I'll let, give you a quick look at what I'm doing there, and uh, we'll go from there. And I should have my leather glove handy here because I want to be able to move this pan as quickly off the quick fire if I think it's starting to get a little carried away. That's doing good, though. So I did decide to uh, let the fire go out in the Bushcraft fire pit, or the fire pit 6, so that I could reconfigure the freestyle into the Bushcraft 6. And this is the first time I've used it in this configuration. It was, you know, how easy was it? It was just pop out the octagon, uh, put the fire sticks back in, drop in the rectangular grate, and uh, yeah, put my, you know, rebuild the fire in it. And what I'm appreciating about this is if it was, if I had two small pots, I would have more than enough space on the top of the stove to run both of them at the same time. As it is, I'm using my uh, titanium Uberlieben Kessel to uh, boil some water for coffee and for doing dishes. But uh, yeah, what, uh, it, what's great about it at this point is I can feed sticks in small ones from either side. I don't have to go through the bottom. I don't have to lift the pot off. I can just feed sticks in from either side. So my water is boiling. Let's get this coffee on the road. Oh yeah, before I go, before I do it, Rampage Coffee. Of course, I'll put a link to it in the video description because it's still the coffee of my choice when I come out to the woods or anywhere for that matter. And the AeroPress because it's still my favorite way to make coffee. Three scoops of 
coffee, three tablespoons, does make it a little bit strong. And because <laughs> my spoon is really dirty from my lunch, I'm using my fork to stir the coffee up. Whoops. Got to get the plunger on to grab the seal. There's a couple different ways. I've talked about this before. There's a couple different ways, of course, of using a, uh, an AeroPress. One is the uh, original and the originally intended method, which is what I just did. And the other one is uh, flip it upside down, and you don't have to worry about getting the plunger in to grab the seal. Problem with the upside down method is it's very tippy. It's very easy to lose the uh, your coffee that way, especially if you're not on even ground. But you hardly ever are when you're out in the woods. So when I'm in the woods, this is the way I tend to use it. When I'm at home, I flip it and have it upside down. Uh, so yeah, what I'm be doing now is I'll be waiting on the coffee. I need to keep the water hot or at least put more water in even now so that I can have enough water for doing my dishes with. But when the coffee is ready, I'll push it through and we'll have a few closing words about the Firebox Freestyle in the two formations, one being the Bushcraft 6 and the other one being the Fire Pit 6. Oh, that is good coffee. Good coffee. So I'm sitting on the edge of the lake and the wind is whistling down the lake, so that's why I have this rock to, to my back here protecting me from the wind. It's beautiful. Just beautiful. It's a bit cool, it's still mid-March, spring hasn't arrived, but uh, we're starting to see some above zero temperatures, so that's a that's good indication spring is coming. So this is my second opportunity to build fires in the Firebox Freestyle. The first one was with the four-sided, just the single unit stove. That worked very well. Uh, today I built two fires, one in the six-sided Bushcraft, or Bushcraft 6, and the other one was the Fire Pit 6. I cooked my lunch over the Fire Pit 6, I chose to do that because it fit the pan that I was using better. So I've got a bit of an appreciation for the two of them. Observations so far, they go through wood. You do need to have lots of wood on hand. Uh, interestingly though, as the fire progressed and the ash started to build up, the combustion started to slow down a little bit. So maybe it's designed just perfectly where all the airflow is at the beginning. and. Uh, when you need it to get it going quickly, get it hot. And as you drop bigger pieces of wood in, that slows it down. As the ash builds up, that slows it down. Then you've got some cooking grill or cooking coals. That's what you're looking for. Yeah, okay. So there are a couple of more configurations that I have yet to use it in, and that would be the Bushcraft 8 and the Fire Pit 8. Those are big stoves. And I'll have to come up with a good reason to build something that big. A good-sized meal, I think, uh, will have to be planned for that. Okay. I will leave links to the original overview video, as well as my first use of this stove. And if you have any questions or any comments on this video, please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore. Take that path less traveled, because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.